<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. Welcome to the Piedmont Softball Complex, the Walker Athletic Complex here in Dimmers. We got a CCS doubleheader on tap. Joseph Garwood here with you for game one. Lions have a tall task ahead of them today. They face number 11, Huntingdon. Huntington comes in 26-4, 9-1 in the CCS. Lions enter at 14-13, 8-2 in the CCS. We might be getting a just playing the road half of their conference schedule and going 8-2 and two in that stretch. They have a couple of, they have three CCS series at home to end the season. Stepping in to lead things off, Brooks Stefankiewicz, and she will drop down the bunt and beat it out. Einmeyer on the hill. Now stepping in will be the left fielder. Kylie Stevens comes in at 375, 467 on base percentage. This Huntington lineup is tough. That one will miss down from Steinmeier. Steinmeier enters 4 and 6, 3.71 ERA, 45 strikeouts against 28 walks on the season. Runner is off and running. Pitches outside and a throw. One hops. Beautiful throw by the catcher, Alyssa Jared, but just diving in in time is Stefankiewicz. Grabs a stolen base for Stefankiewicz. Two-oh now to Kylie Stevens. Squares to bunt, gets it down. Going to be fielded by Isley. The throw to first is in time. Maddie Crotta, good job covering over from second base. So sacrifice bunt, 5 4 on the putout. Stefankowitz moves to third base. And now, probably one of the early or one of the front runners for CCS Player of the Year. It'll be the shortstop, Jordan Holman. Comes in at 433. 477 on base percentage, 773 slugging. She has six home runs on the season. That's tied for tops in the CCS. That's a good pitch by Steinmeier. Fastball over the outside corner for strike one. She's also tied for the lead in the conference in doubles. Good swing, but just a little bit late. Good fastball again by Steinmeier. Well located, and now she's got herself... In an advantageous position, up 0-2. Be a big momentum boost if she can take care of Holman and keep the Hawks off the board here in the first. Rise ball misses high, 1-2. and two. Going through this, hunting to the lineup. They do not have anyone in their starting nine that has an on-base percentage below 400. So they are going to be tough. That one, one hop back to the circle, handled by Steinmeier. The throw to first is in time. Good reflexes there in the circle by Steinmeier. Takes care of a very tough out. And now she's one out away from escaping trouble. Not out of the woods yet, though. Here comes the first baseman cleanup hitter, Bailey Murphy. She comes in hitting 407 on the season. Check swing, fouled off to the left. Good job by Steinmeier to work ahead. Murphy third on the Hawks in RBIs with 25. Just one home run. Does have six doubles on the season. No one. Late again. Good. It's like some good velocity on that fastball from Steinmeier. The couple, the three, four hitters for the Hawks have been late. They have not squared one up yet. And once again, second straight at bat. She has worked herself into a 0 oh and 2 count and that one will miss just up 1 and 2 good 0 oh 2 pitch she did the same thing to Holman did not get the chase we'll see if she can take care of Murphy with the 1 2 tries to go the outside corner good take by Murphy must have missed just a hair outside off the plate not a bad pitch though and now it's 2 2 Right fielder Riley Rudick waits on deck for the Hawks. 2-2 Two -two and fouled straight back. Murphy spoiled another good pitch there by Steinmeier. Two 
Brooks Stefankowitz reached on a infield bunt single to start the game. That one's fouled straight back. Murphy looks like she might be timing it up a little bit better. That pitch was probably a ball going over the top of the strike zone. Maybe something off speed in the cards here from Steinmeier to try to get this punch out. And another one's fouled away by Murphy, who's putting up a good fight here with two outs. Left to right in the outfield for Piedmont, Kennedy Votava, Hannah Calloway in center, Jasmine Lowry in right field. They might be busy today. That one's launched out toward right, but right at Lowry, she comes in. A step makes the grab. Steinmeier strands a runner. No score. Headed to the bottom of the first. Welcome back to the Walker Athletic Complex here in Demarest. Piedmont softball doubleheader game one against the Huntington Hawks, the number 11 ranked Huntington Hawks. It'll be Maddie Speaks, the shortstop, leading things off, and the Lions go up against Allie Roberts, the right-hander for the Hawks. She is 13-3 with a 1.14 ERA. She has 127 strikeouts against just 29 walks. So Piedmont... Tall task ahead, but we'll see if they're up for the challenge. It speaks takes a called strike on the outside corner. Speaks comes in 303 average. She's enjoyed a solid freshman campaign. And that one will miss off the plate as well. She's taken home a CCS Rookie of the Week honor so far this year. And she has nailed down the shortstop position. Not an easy freshman to do bat lead off and play shortstop that's a lot of responsibility on a freshman and she's worked herself into a favorable 2-1 count a lot of left-handed slap hitters in this lineup for Piedmont speaks is one of them reaches out pokes one foul Caitlin Isley waits on deck at the third baseman Carrie Taylor will bat third and play first Jasmine Lowry another big season for her she's the right fielder hitting cleanup Riley Erickson gets a start at the DP slot today, hitting fifth. Maddie Kronick, a fellow freshman in the sixth hole, playing second. Good take there by Speaks. 3-2 count. We'll round out the Piedmont order. The catcher is Alyssa Jarrett, another newcomer. A couple veterans at the 8-9 spots. Hannah Callaway in center. Kennedy Votava in left. Rounds it out. Hitting ninth. 3-2. Two. two hop to short. Tough hop for the shortstop Holman, and she's unable to come up with it. Well, it's going to be a tough play as with speaks with a slap slap hitter running out of the box. Even if she came up with that cleanly, it's probably a base hit. Took a tough hop as well, but usually a play that you see Holman at least able to glove and get a clean throw off to first. But either way, Piedmont has a runner aboard. And we'll see if Speaks is off and moving. Piedmont near the top of the league in stolen bases. About 83 of 91. Speaks not going as Caitlin Isley will take a ball low. Isley, fifth year in the program, had her freshman season cut short by COVID. She has been a staple in that number two spot and at third base. She's had a very good season as well. Has had to battle some injuries, but she's hitting 439. Gets the bunt down. Going to be a tough play. Bounced by the pitcher 
Roberts, and Isley beats the throw that was dug out by the first baseman. She just beat the throw to first. I think it was a... Either a sacrifice bunt, or you could also give that. That's just a bunt. Just gets you out a bunt single. Now to be the first baseman, Kara Taylor. Taylor will square as well. Piedmont playing for a run early. Taylor leads the team in home runs with three. He's got 20 RBIs, also tops on the team. Looked like on that bunt play, the pitcher, it was did not get to the pitcher Roberts as quickly as she thought. By the time she was able to field it, it was going to be too late. Isley, very fast runner, running out of the box. Taylor will take a ball there. Speed is aboard and speaks at second. Isley at first. Taylor standing in the batter's box. Chance for Piedmont to grab an early lead. And she'll take a called strike on the outside edge. And now she's down on the count one and two. Going in a game where you're not necessarily the favorites to win. You're going up against a very, very tough opponent. If you can grab that early lead, start to change the momentum, have the dugout believe in you can win. And that's a strikeout of Taylor. Roberts went up the ladder and Taylor could not catch up to it. So that's out number one. A big strikeout there for Roberts. And now we'll see the cleanup hitter. Jasmine Lowry. That one will paint the inside edge at the knees. Good pitch by Roberts. She's really shown why she is got that ERA so low. Last couple pitches, she's been very tough. Lowry squares and then pulls back on the pitch that misses off the plate away. One and one. Squares again, pulls back, check swing, pitch is high. They'll appeal to the third base umpire, and he says no, she did not go. Big swing count there. Plus count for Lowry. Comes in hitting 403 on the season, slugging 597 tops on the team. Squares again late, then pulls back late. The pitch misses off the plate. We'll have a little visit in the circle as the Huntington catcher, Miranda Treadway, will jog out to try to calm down Roberts. A little meeting with Piedmont head coach Terry Martin as Lowry and him meet halfway down the third base line. Big spot here. This is a hitter that you want up if you're Piedmont. Lowry. She has not left the yard. Pulls back on the ground to second. This could be trouble and bobbling it at second base is Holman. The throw comes now to the plate and beating the throw is Speaks. Throw at third now and safely diving in there is Isley. Standing at second base is Jasmine Lowry. The shortstop Holman has had some trouble. I think she was maybe trying to turn two and they didn't even get one. So the Lions plate a run on the board. She, she reaches them for the no choice no matter what. Yeah. And advances. So. Oh. So now it'll be the DP, Megan Steinmeier. Looks like Piedmont did the old flex DP swap. Steinmeier comes in. 338 average, 394 on base, no homers, 15 RBIs, a chance to give herself a little more room to work with in the circle. Yeah, 
Infield, corners creeping in. Steinmeier first pitch swinging, fouls it straight back to the screen. Big chance for the Lions. Big swing and a miss. That's that rise ball that the Piedmont hitters are going to have to stay off of. We saw it get Taylor already in the first inning. And Steinmeier unable to catch up to that one. Pitch is going to look like a very hittable strike out of the hand and just can't quite catch up to it. Same pitch again. Steinmeier comes up empty. Second strikeout of the inning for Roberts. And that's a big strikeout. You really needed contact there if you're the Lions. And now... It's going to be a, going to be up to the freshman Matty Chronic. Chronic has a walk off already. This season, first pitch will find the inner half of the plate. Chronic couldn't pull the trigger. 0 and 1 the count. All right, comes in 217 average on the season. Does have a home run, eight knocked in, comes up empty on that one. And looks like if Roberts is able to locate, she's going to be really tough to hit. But the Lions were able to sc scrape across a run, took advantage of some a fielding miscue by the Hawks, and some speed on the base pass, some alert base running by Speaks to not stop on that one. Just rounded the bag and used her excellent speed to dive in just ahead of the throw. Isley did the same to get to third base. As Chronic now will face a 1-2 pitch. That was a super well-located pitch. Just missed outside, though. Chronic couldn't pull the trigger if she tried there. 2-2 two -two now coming. Swing and a miss. Roberts strikes out the side, but the Lions strike for a run. Piedmont leads 1-0 as we go to the second. One run on two hits, one error, two... Head to the top of the second here at the WAC. The right fielder, Riley Rudick. Riley Rudick will lead things off. Megan Steinmeier stranded a runner at third base. In the top half of the first. Piedmont able to scrape across a run, a very manufactured run in the bottom half to lead 1 nothing. First pitch swinging is Rudick, and she fouls it off out of play. Rudick comes in 379. 446 on base percentage, slugging 591. Those are all very good numbers. That one misses up and away from Steinmeier. Rudick, three home runs, second on the team in homer, 17 runs knocked in. That one smoked on the foul. Down the left field line. You see the Piedmont, or rather the Huntington head coach standing at third. Playing off, standing like well into foul territory. About as deep as you're going to see a third base coach stand. Nobody on. She can do it. One, two, fouled straight back. 
Sammeyer, some good velocity on that fastball. We've seen these Huntington hitters late consistently, first time through the order. So if you're Steinmeier, kind of got to take advantage of that early. You may not have that weapon to go to second and third time through, but use it while you got it. And here's the one-two, fouled back again. Another well-executed pitch by Steinmeier. Two again, try to go back inside, and that one froze Rudick, but must have missed just high and in. Umpire motions to the Piedmont dugout, showing where that pitch missed. Swing and a miss, a strikeout for Steinmeier, another high velocity fastball, and Rudick could not catch up to it. We're we'll set the Piedmont defense in the infield. Experienced on the corners. Fourth year player in, actually, a couple of fifth year players in Taylor and Isley. Freshman up the middle and speaks at short and chronic at second base. Catcher Alyssa Jarrett. Newcomer as well. Freshman from Adairsville. They do have a. Senior in center field in Hannah Callaway. And steps the catcher, Miranda Treadway. 358 average coming in. And that's a, another strike from Steinmeier. She has looked sharp. It's early, but got to like what you're seeing from the right hander. 0 2. That one's hit pretty sharply out toward right, but right at Jasmine Lowry. She'll put it away for out number two. Probably the hardest contact of the afternoon for the Hawks, but found the glove and two quick outs. Nobody on. Let's see the left-handed hitting Neve McIntyre step in. She's at 412, the batting average. And she's late as well, fouls a fastball off. Kind of into the Piedmont on deck circle there. McIntyre has played in just 10 games. This is just her seventh start of the season. She's only got 17 at-bats, so a little bit less of a sample size to her season from the rest of her teammates in this lineup, and she's late again. And once again, at least three or four times, Steinmeier's gotten up in the count 0-2. A great way to pitch. You have so many options. You try to go off-speed there. does not get to chase, but it's still a very good pitch. Now the one two. Inside corner doesn't get the call. She's two. She's been able to locate both sides of the plate pretty well. She's changing speeds. I would be surprised. Maybe try to go up the ladder a little bit with the heater. Two two. She did, and she got the call. Call third strike. Steinmeier strikes out two in the frame. Piedmont leads 1-0 as they go to the bottom of the second. Welcome back. Head to the bottom of the second inning. 
Three off the bottom of the second, the catcher, Alyssa Jarrett. Female will have seven, eight, nine due up in the order, starting with the freshman catcher, Alyssa Jarrett, comes in hitting 250. Story of the game so far, Megan Steinmeier has shut down this potent Huntington offense through two frames. Piedmont able to scrape across a run in the bottom of the first. Going to try to add to it the bottom of their lineup. Jarrett off the handle, popped up. The catcher quickly out of the crouch. Treadway makes the grab. And that is a quick out number one for Allie Roberts. Now we'll see the center fielder, Hannah Calloway. Now batting number 11, Hannah Calloway. Calloway, senior. I've seen like smatterings of playing time earlier on in her career and was used heavily as a pinch runner and defensive replacement. The injury to the opening day center fielder, Hartley Nerva. This seems to be Callaway's spot in the lineup. She's done a good job at the plate, hitting 3 or in 314, getting on base at a 385 clip. She has done well in her expanded role this season. Something that you love to see from a senior who has not necessarily been one of the main contributors throughout the career, getting that chance in their final year and taking advantage of it. She's one and one in the count now. And tried to slap one off to the left and lined it to the Piedmont dugout on the third base side. And now she's going to have to battle one, two. The slap, the small ball hitters have had more success so far the first time through for the Lions. That one misses high. It seems like the batters that have, with the exception of Jasmine Lowry, people that when we've tried to take big swings, it is not, more times than not, they've come up empty. 2-2, two -two, that one is a swinging strikeout for Callaway. Could not do anything with that pitch. That had a lot of movement on it. Diving down and away. It's one you just tip your cap. Four strikeout for Roberts. All of her outs have come via the strikeout. Now two outs, nobody on. Kennedy Votava. Votava comes in, 400 average. Squares the bunt, takes ball one. Upstairs from Roberts. Votava, once again, very... Steady force, almost acting like a second leadoff hitter in that nine spot. She's got really good speed. She's gotten on base at a high clip this year, 441 coming in. And she'll take a fastball on the outside edge for strike one. One-one pitch, trying to frame it once the catcher Treadway doesn't get the call. That one missed outside. Two and one. Leadoff hitter and fellow lefty hitting Maddie Speaks waits on deck for the Lions. Big thing too, got through. At the very least, Piedmont will be able to turn it over to the top of the order for the second. And the one hop having trouble with it, unable to field it cleanly was the third baseman Maddie Grace Hubbard. And that'll be an E5. When Piedmont has been able to put the ball in play, the Hawks' defense has, the box, the speaks. has struggled. Looking at the CCS standings, they are not one of the top error-committing teams. They're one of the better defensive teams in the conference. And they have not necessarily showed it through the first couple of frames. Your Piedmont just put the ball in. When they put the ball in play, good things have happened. Only, As we said, only outs have been, or almost all the outs have been via the strikeout. Had to pop up to the catcher to start off this inning. Now we go back to the top for Speaks. Takes ball one. First, second pitch, rather. Bounce back to the circle. That one's handled by Roberts. She'll flip to first. Lions down in the second. Piedmont leads 1-0 as we go to the third.
Hitting off the top of the third, the third baseman, Matty Grace Hubbard. Rolling right along to the top of the third inning. Megan Steinmeier takes the circle. She'll face an eight, nine, and one due up for the Hawks. Just one base runner reach, leadoff hitter in the first inning. Stefankowitz. Now it's a called strike to Maddie Grace Hubbard, winning at 412 batting average. Oh, one swing and a miss coming flying out of the batter's box there was Hubbard came up empty. Steinmeier has looked every bit as good as Roberts in the circle so far today. Well, once again, another 0-2 count. That one is lashed up the middle and into center field. That's the first, first hit to the outfield for the Hawks in the game with like an off-speed pitch as she left over the plate. And Hubbard able to put good contact on it. Now we'll see the center fielder, Cameron Miller. Comes in at 386. She'll have a little meeting. Huntington head coach, Casey Kreitzberg. You see the Hawks' trajectory of the program? They have consistently gotten better, and now they have found themselves as a nationally relevant program. Top two in the CCS, Bellhaven in the top ten in the nation. Huntington just outside at 11. And Hawks and Blazers played earlier this year. That was a split with the Hawks taking... One of those two games by an 8-1 score. Pretty decisive. Squares to bunt, pulls back, and no activity from the runner Hubbard at first. It's ball one. Dangerous top of the order waiting next. Second time through will surely present a new challenge for Steinmeier. 1-0. Squares to bunt, fouls it away. Definitely a sacrifice situation for the Lions. Just need to take care of the out that you can get that they're giving you and then go to work with the top of the order. Gets it down. Handled by Isley. Snap throw to first. Chronic covers and the throw is in time for out number one. 5-4 in the books has a sacrifice. And now we go back to the top for Brooks Stefankowitz. We saw her excellent speed on display to start off this game. Only Piemont could not have done anything more. If she's going to be able to place bunts as perfectly as she did in the first, Piemont's going to have a hard time getting her out in this game. She's going to try it again. This one's bunted hard back to Steinmeier. She has plenty of time to retire Stefankowitz rather at first. 1-3 on the put out. Over to third base goes Hubbard. And now the inning rests with the bat of Kylie Stevens. Stevens dropped down that sack bunt back in the first inning. And once again, she, Samar finds herself second time in the first three innings of this game. Runner at third, two outs. Can she work her way out of it? And keep this lead on the Piedmont side as she fires a rise ball high, 1-0. That one is lined out toward left. It'll drop down for a base hit. And Huntington ties the game on the single by Stevens. Didn't really hit it hard. Just kind of was late. Got it off the handle, but perfectly placed. And a manufactured run. The leadoff single. The sacrifice bunt. The bunt for a hit attempt by Stefankowitz moves Hubbard to third. And the RBI from Stevens now the dangerous Jordan Holman. Steinmeier misses outside. She was able to get ahead of Holman in the first inning, 0-2, and then got some weak contact. Now she's down 1-0, though. And that one will find the inner half. Good pitch by Steinmeier. A little front, little front door, actually. That one, that one looks like it started in off the plate and then dipped back to the inside corner. Here's the 1-1. That one will find the zone as well. That one a little bit they're closer to the edge or maybe even just off the inside corner, but when Steinmeier has shown she has command of her pitches, sometimes the home plate dump is more apt to expand the zone. 1-2. Hit sharply on the ground. Two hops handled by Speaks. Throw across is in time. 
And side is retired. Hawks strike for a run. We're tied up 1-1. We go to the bottom of the third. Go to the bottom of the third inning here at the WAC. Caitlin Isley will lead things off for the Lions. Find themselves in a 1-1 tie game in the early going. It's number 11, Huntington. Isley reached on an infield bunt single her first time. Swinging away here and lines that one foul off to the right. We've seen the recipe for Piedmont to score against Roberts, who is very tough, is try to find a a way to get leadoff hitter on and then start to try to play small ball and manufacture runs. It's going to be hard to string together clean hits against Roberts. Piedmont with a team that Piedmont's a team that does not have much power in the lineup. It's going to have to get base runners on and play small ball to get runs across. 1-1 one, one now to Isley and that one bounces well out ahead of the plate for ball two. We've seen glimpses in the early going of what makes Roberts so tough, but it doesn't seem like she's got her A-plus stuff in the early going. That one's lined out toward right. That's got a chance to get down. It will. It will close to the wall. Robert or Isley will have extra bases standing up, and that is a recipe for success for the Lions. Looked like the right fielder, Rudick, took a direct route to that one instead of trying to cut it off, and that allowed Isley to... Sprint for second. She's aboard. She's got a single and a double in two plate appearances. And now Kara Taylor, who was a strikeout victim her first time, could not lay off the velocity up above the strike zone. We'll see if they play small ball here. Taylor squares the bunt, gets it down, and that one's going to roll in between. The first baseman and pitcher just looked at each other, and Isley's going to come in and score standing up from second. Looked like some confusion between Roberts and the first baseman, Bailey Murphy. And that should just go as an infield hit. And an RBI for Kara Taylor increases that team leading RBI total to 21. And the Lions in business with Jasmine Lowry at a well hit. <laughs> the ball sharply her first time up and she'll take a call to strike one. We've seen this Piedmont infield defense has really, or the Piedmont offense has really put a lot of pressure on the Huntington infield defense and they have come up empty a couple of times. Looked like just some straight up miscommunication between the pitcher and first baseman there and Isley never stopped running. Looks like we're going to have a pinch runner after the first pitch of the at-bat. Kara Taylor lifted for the freshman Kaylee Wilson. For the Lions, number one, Kaylee Wilson. Game like this against such a difficult team. Every run is going to be critical for the Lions. And now you got your big bats in the lineup. Jasmine Lowry. Steinmeier hitting in that five spot as they did the pitcher flex. Swap. Four hits already for Piedmont. Only one has left the infield. That was Isley's double leading off this inning. Oh, squaring and 
looked like Lowry was caught in between whether to pull it back or leave it out there, and she fouls it off. Now she's down 0-2. We'll see if Terry Martin lets her swing away. She's going to in a tough spot against a strikeout pitcher. Huntington outfield playing a very shallow for a hitter with Lowry's power. Lowry does have over-the-fence power. She's definitely got solid gap power. If she can find the barrel here, she could run for a while. 11 doubles on the season for Jasmine Lowry. 0-2 again from Roberts. That one is sharply hit past third and into left field. Wilson will take a big turn around second. Well fielded by the Hawks in left. She'll stop there. It's a single for Jasmine Lowry, and the Lions have something cooking again here in this third inning. 0-2 pitch had a little too much of the play, and we're going to have the Huntington coach come to meet with the home plate umpire. We might have potentially a swap in the outfield. Uh, we're going to have a swap in the circle. Allie Roberts has been lifted. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with the new info for the new Huntington arm. Steinmeier. Welcome back. So we continue action here. Game one of this doubleheader. Piedmont up two to one. Megan Steinmeier stepping in. New Huntington pitcher is Brooke Cooper. Comes in with an eight and one record, a 2.02 ERA. She doesn't have quite the gaudy numbers that Allie Roberts does, but. No slouch herself is Cooper. Wondering if she was potentially going to be the scheduled game two starter. So we'll see what the Hawks decide to do with their pitching allotment for this double header. Maybe potential to bring Roberts back. Dimeyer scores the bunt, takes the poke at it, and just barely gets a piece of it. Even count one and one. But you got to consider it a success if you're Piedmont coming in the game. If you can chase Allie Roberts from the contest in just the third inning. You gotta consider that a job well done. Definitely was not, probably not the plan coming in for the Hawks. That bun is popped up, handled by the first baseman, Bailey Murphy, and not what you want there if you're Steinmeier. Does not get the runners to second and third, and now we'll see what Maddie Cronick can do. She was a strikeout victim against Roberts. Back in the first inning ended that frame. Lions struck for a run in the first. One more here in the third. A leadoff double by Caitlin Isley, the catalyst for that. Off-speed pitch. That's a tough one on the first pitch that you see. And Chronic not able to pull the trigger for strike one. He might have shown when they've been able to put the ball in play on the ground, they have had a lot of success. It's just the strikeouts and the infield pop-ups that they really haven't so far. A slow off-speed pitch. That one came out of the hand a little wrong there from Cooper. 1-1 one, one count now to Chronic Piedmont with five hits already. But you definitely, against a lineup as potent and as Huntington's, you want to add on if you can here in the third while the Hawks are reeling. Chronic gets the button down. A ton of spin on that, and the Hawks will let it go foul. I had a ton of backspin on it. And now Chronic down on the count one and two. She's going to have to battle here in this at bat.
one to your count. 2-1 your score in favor of the Lions. That one is hit off the end of the bat. It's going to fall and be bobbled by the shortstop, Holman. Everybody is going to be safe. The Hawks were able to keep it on the infield. But that ball was perfectly placed by Kronick. Not the most well-hit ball, but just out of the reach of the third baseman, Matty Grace Hubbard. Holman able to back it up, but even if she had fielded that cleanly, she was not going to have a play. And now we'll see what head coach Terry Martin does. The pinch runner, Kaylee Wilson, is at third. She ran for Kara Taylor, who reached. Lowry's the runner at second. Chronic at first. Alyssa Jarrett, the catcher, into the batter's box. And she'll take a first pitch off the plate away for ball one. Six hits already for Piedmont. That one's hit sharply, just foul past third. Good swing on that one by Alyssa Jarrett. Pop out victim her first time up. Callaway waiting on deck. One out in the inning. Slow off-speed pitch. Jarrett waited back on it, but didn't quite square it up. Fouls it off over the Huntington dugout, and now she's going to have to battle with two strikes. Force at any base. That makes things a little bit easier for the Hawks on the infield. Like to probably think that if they have no chance to turn two, they're probably going to come to the plate, try to cut off that run from scoring. One, two. Softly hit in the air. It'll be handled by the second baseman. Stefankowitz, and that is out number two. Big out for there for Cooper to get. Kate was able to keep the ball in the infield, was able to keep the run from scoring with one out. And it looks like Terry Martin is going to make some kind of change here with the bases loaded and two outs. We're going to have what looks to be a pinch hitter. It will be number 15, Leah Smith. Pinch hitting for the Lions, number 15, Leah Smith. Smith just nine at bats so far in the season. It's limited sample size, but she has had success. She's four for nine all the year. A couple of RBIs, a couple of runs scored. Smith, a freshman from Norcross, Georgia, Norcross High School, and she is. Got a big chance here in the bottom of the third to allow the Lions to get a little bit of separation, a little bit of breathing room from the Hawks in the early to middle part of this game. Right-handed hitting, Smith steps in. Off-speed, slow pitch, check swing, and she went around. We've seen Cooper do that a lot so far early on. She has started these hitters with off-speed. And Smith way out ahead of that one, was not geared for that pitch. Here's the 0-1. Goes with the heat and fouled off to the right, and Smith now going to have to battle down 0-2. Yeah. Two outs, runners can go on contact. It's an advantage for the Lions at the plate. Just need good contact here from the freshman. O2, grounded a third and fielded cleanly by Hubbard. She'll step on the bag, and the Lions are retired in the bottom of the third. Piedmont does scratch across the run. They chase Roberts from the game. Piedmont leads 2-1. We go to the fourth.
Welcome back to the WAC. Joseph Garwood here for game one of this CCS doubleheader between Piedmont and Huntingdon. The 11th ranked Hawks find themselves in a 2-1 deficit, something they have not found themselves in a lot this season. As Megan Steinmeier has been excellent in the circle, first three innings of play. And she is down the count here, 2-0 to Bailey Murphy, the first baseman. Seeing Steinmeier consistently work ahead in the count. A ton of O, a lot more O2 counts than 2-0 counts, and she doesn't get the call here, 3 and 0. A little encouragement from third baseman Caitlin Isley. We'll see if having a lead affects the way Steinmeier goes about her business. 3-0, that's off the plate away as well, and a four-pitch walk to Bailey Murphy to start things off in the fourth. And now we'll see the right fielder, Riley Rudick. Strikeout victim her first time up. We'll see if the Hawks go to play small ball. They're going to have a pinch runner at first base. Looks like it's going to be number nine, Lauren Watts, to run at first. Got to think there's going to be some kind of action here, either a stolen base attempt, sacrifice bunt, something to try to Pitch running for the Hawks, number nine, Lauren Watts. We'll try to advance that runner Watts to scoring position. Running in the heart of their lineup. At the moment, Kara Taylor creeps in, Isley as well on the corners. Squares gets it down, Isley will field it, bare hand throw to first, handled by Kronik. That's three times. The Hawks have had leadoff runners reach. Three times they've laid down sacrifice bunts, and Isley and Kronick have been up to the task on the defensive side in all three. Runner in scoring position now is the pinch runner Watts, and now stepping into the box is the catcher Miranda Treadway. First pitch misses high and in for ball one. If you were with us yesterday for Piedmont Baseball and their series opener against Covenant, you saw how windy it was. It's not quite as windy today, but both American flags at baseball and softball are moving pretty good out there. So wind's still a little bit of a factor. And it's 2-0 and oh now. It's two of the three hitters, Chronic, or rather Steinmeier, has fell, fallen behind in the count. 2-0 oh now to Treadway. That one will find the zone for a called strike one. Like Treadway almost had one pitch, one spot in mind. And a well-executed fastball from Steinmeier over the outside part of the plate. Gets her back in the count. 2-1. That one finds the top of the strike zone. Like Treadway wasn't 100% sure she agreed with that call, but it's 2-2 two and two from Steinmeier. That one is laced to third, handled by Isley. Fakes the throw. The ball slips out of her hand. Looks like she tried to maybe was caught in between trying to double the runner off of or catch the runner advancing too far from second to third. She did the hard part. It was a great snag to keep that ball in the infield, but runner will reach first. McIntyre at the plate, and she will take a ball high. one -oh, runners at first and second. That one's a laced foul. Looks like they're going to play for a little bit of a bigger inning. McIntyre swinging away first couple pitches. Now she's going to square. Gets the bunt down. Handled by Steinmeier. The throw to first is in time as they get Chronic covering. 1-4 on the sacrifice. That advances two runners to scoring position. But now two outs in the inning. And now this inning is going to rest with the bat of Maddie Grace Hubbard. She singled. Grace Hubbard. She singled to center. 
her first time up. That was the first hit to the outfield for the Hawks in the ball game. Steinmeier got ahead of her 0-2 and then left a pitch over the heart of the plate that Hubbard was able to take advantage of. First pitch misses inside for ball one to the Hawks' third baseman. Hit off the handle, handled by Speaks. Though across is in time. Got her by a half step, maybe. Great play by the freshman Speaks. The Hawks strand a couple runners. And the Lions still lead 2 1 as we go to the bottom of the fourth. That's Kennedy Votava's music as the left fielder will lead things off. 9-1-2 due up for the Lions. They lead it 2-1. Onion stranded two more runners on base. Well done by Megan Steinmeier. Trying to bunt is Votava, and she comes up empty for strike one. Piemont's chased the outstanding Huntington pitcher, Allie Roberts. But they, luckily for the Hawks, they have two outstanding pitchers. Grace Cooper, number 42, came in or Brooke Cooper, rather, came in and relief and worked out of trouble, stranded the bases loaded with one out. Piedmont was unable to cash in any additional runs. What could be potentially a turning point in this game. The Lions against a formidable Hawks team. Got to like the way they found, like the position they find themselves in. That one's fouled straight back by Votava. One and two. Gotta like the way you, the position that you find yourself in if you're Piedmont. I'm sure they'd take a 2 1 lead in the bottom of the fourth inning. Megan Steinmeier has been outstanding in the circle. The Lions have executed defensively. They've played small ball to perfection at times. Motava, one hop. That one's handled by the pitcher, Cooper. And she'll flip it to first for out number one. Now we'll see Maddie Speaks. The shortstop, Betty Speaks. Speaks has wreaked havoc so far in this game. From that top of the lineup, the freshman shortstop made an outstanding play in the field to nab a fast runner by a half step to get Piedmont out of that top of the fourth inning. Tries to lay down a bunt and fielded in foul territory by the catcher. Redway. Speaks will come back to first or come back to the plate for the continuation of the at bat. Taylor Isley on deck. She's got she has a couple of hits as well. Now the 0-1. Reach out, poke back to the circle off the glove of the pitcher Cooper. And that's gonna go as an infield hit for Maddie Speaks. Looks like the momentum, honestly, of Cooper is taking her over to that third base side. So she was trying to react. She was able to react on the bounce back to the circle by Votava. Unable to catch it cleanly. And once that deflected off the edge of her, edge of her glove, Speaks was able to reach easily with her speed. And now Piedmont with 
A little bit of a threat again. Caitlin Isley steps into the box. Speaks is at first. We'll see how quickly she's on the move. She's on the move in the first pitch, and Isley spoils a foul. Back into the woods behind the Walker Athletic Complex. Isley reached on a bunt single in the first. And then she scored what has the go-ahead run to this point after a double to, down the right field line, her last at bat. She's going to score a bunt, pull, and tried to slash that one and fouled it away, 0-2. Oh First third baseman came charging in. Isley was trying to play a little game, trying to just bounce one past the third baseman. If she was able to get it past the third baseman charging Hubbard, she, that was going to be an easy hit. Now she's going to have to work with a 0-2 count. Tough pitcher to face. This one's lined out toward right. It's going to hang up, though. Speaks is going to get doubled off. She was off on the pitch. Tough break for the Lions as Rudick doubles off Speaks. Piedmont rally stuffed out. 2-1 Lions lead. We go to the fifth. No room, someone hit no errors, none left on. We head to the top of the fifth inning here in Demarest. Game one of this Piedmont softball doubleheader. Lions lead the number 11 Huntington Hawks 2-1. to one. Again, Steinmeier has been excellent in the circle so far. She's got nine more outs to get with that one run lead. She's going to have a tough task ahead. Starting with the 9-1-2 hitters due up. Cameron Miller, the center fielder is first. This is a must out right now if you're Steinmeier. Do not want to have her aboard trying to face the top of this order for the third time. It's a 1-1 one -one count. Miller comes in. The, she comes in hitting 386. The leadoff hitter Stefankowitz is hitting 380. So as we mentioned at the top, up and down this lineup, the Hawks are tough, tough outs. I've seen Steinmeier maybe not be quite as sharp as she was in the early innings. She's down the count 2-1. Miller gets the bunt down, charging Isley. Quick throw is in time, but they're going to say she pulled Maddie Chronic off the bag. Chronic not able to hold first base. Looked like she, looked like she did. No argument, though, from the Lions. Probably going to be a throwing error on Isley as the, the throw was on the money. If does not pull Chronic off the bag, the runner is easily out. The batter runner is easily out at first. Now we're going to have multiple meetings. Terry Martin walking into the circle with his entire infield. Huntington with three players and the coach meeting down the third base line. Brooks Stefankowitz will be the hitter. She's laid down a couple bunts, reached to lead off the game, and was left stranded at third. Castillo's able to get the sacrifice down her last time. Looks like it's probably going to be Caitlin Isley and Maddie Cronick are going to have to make up for the miscue. That one gets it down. Tough play. Isley gloves it this time, and the throw is late. 
The throw was on the money, but the pure speed of Stefankowicz was too much. She deadened that one perfectly. You can't ask for a better place to bunt, and now the Hawks are in business. Two on, nobody out, and the two, three, four hitters are due up. This is going to be tough for Steinmeier. Let's see if they play small ball with Kylie Stevens. She's going to bunt, gets it down. Isley again, bare hand. That throw will also pulls Kronik off the bag. She leaped in the air, and by the time she came down on first base, Stevens had beaten it. That's going to be the second throwing error of the inning on Isley. And now the spot you absolutely don't want to be in. Bases loaded, nobody out for the shortstop, Jordan Holman. They're going to let her swing away, it appears. That one misses high for ball one. But do you have a force at any base? Two errors in the inning and an infield hit. That one misses down and in as well for ball two. Nowhere to put Holman, and this is a dangerous count. Two zero hit foul out of play, off to the right. Miller the runner at third, Stefankowitz at second, Stevens at first. If you're the Lions here, you don't want to let this inning get away from you. Got to accept the fact the Hawks are likely going to tie this game at least. The runner you're going to be worried about is Stefankowitz at second, as now Holman. It's worked herself into a 3-1 advantage as Steinmeier missed high with the 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one pitch. That's a big swing, but good pitch by Steinmeier. Holman was late. We've seen her. She has not been able to get around on the fastball by Steinmeier so far. She was close on that one. But we have a massive 3-2 pitch coming up right here. 3-2. That one's launched out to left. It's not going to carry, though. Battling the sun is Votava. She's going to make the grab. Fires to third. The runner from third, Miller, will score the tying run. But all in all, I think the Lions will certainly take that one. That's a big first out for Steinmeier. They get through Holman, who had the ability to easily do a ton more damage. And that all-important first out is made. And now it'll be the first baseman, Bailey Murphy. Murphy. Murphy took a four-pitch walk her last time up. Potential double play candidate. And the pitch will miss off the plate away for ball one. The 1-0 one -oh from Steinmeier. That one will catch the outside corner, even things up at 1-1 one one in the count. It's like they're content to play play it straight up are the Hawks. Have not seen any sign of a bunt from Murphy here. Trying to go after that outside corner, just missed off the plate. Not a bad spot, just did not get the chase that she wanted. Now she's got herself down herself down two one in the count to a dangerous left handed hitter. That one is cracked out toward right field. Going to be a long-running grab made there by Lowry over toward the line. All the runners have to stay put. Stefankowicz did not tag. I think she thought that ball was going to get down. That had some extreme exit velocity off the bat of Murphy. That was a tough running basket catch by Lowry. She can do it all. She's been excellent at the plate, and that was an incredible running grab. That one is lifted out towards short. Over is Maddie Speak. She'll make the catch. The Hawks tie the game. But the Lions limit the damage. We are tied 2 2. So go to the bottom of the fifth. Two errors, two left on. Head to the bottom.
welcome back to the Walker Athletic Complex. Been a really good game so far between Piedmont and Huntingdon. The Hawks were able to tie the game with a single run in the fifth. And Megan Steinmeier once again working out of trouble. Piedmont will have the three, four, five hitters due up. Kara Taylor, Jasmine Lowry, and Megan Steinmeier, the power portion of the lineup for the Lions. Slow off-speed pitch drops in for strike one to Taylor. Taylor Taylor struck out her first time and then was able to reach on a bunt single her second time. Second time now some of these hitters will face new pitcher Cooper. That one grounded up the middle. Nice play to her left. The throw is wide from the shortstop Holman. She made a great play to get the ball, but the throw with her off balance was not even close. Which should go as an infield single for Kara Taylor. Second one of the game for the senior first baseman. Now we'll see Jasmine Lowry, who got a hit off of Roberts her first time. This is her first plate appearance against. Brooke Cooper, and that one misses off the plate away for ball one. Lowry made that outstanding running catch on the line drive down the right field line by Bailey Murphy. We'll see if she can contribute at the plate as well. Eight hits for the Lions already, each team with two errors. Breaking ball, slow pitch dips in for strike one. Like Terry Martin, even with the tie game. He's content to let one of his best hitters in the lineup try to do some extra base damage. She's on square. As soon as I say that, she squares the bunt, comes up empty, and the throw behind Taylor is late. And now one and two will likely see the sling away sign back on for his right fielder. Lowry, an FCA All-Region performer last year. She's followed it up with a great junior season as well. 1-2, poked back to the circle, bobbled at first by Cooper. She'll make the throw to first. Works just the same as a sacrifice. Lowry gets Taylor to scoring position with one out. Now it's going to be up to Megan Steinmeier. Steinmeier has a chance to put herself in line for the win in the circle. So we'll see if Steinmeier, the hitter, can help out Steinmeier, the pitcher. Runner is at second. Kara Taylor has already been lifted for a pinch runner once, I believe, so she's got to stay in there. Now off the end of the bat, back to the circle. Throw to first is in time. Over to third base goes Taylor. Slowly getting her closer to the plate. A lot more ways you can score from third than from second, even with two outs. And now it's going to rest in the hands of Maddie Chronic. We'll see what the freshman can do. In a big spot here in the bottom of the fifth. Two outs. Kara Taylor, the go-ahead run, is at third base. Slow off-speed pitch. That one must have stayed a little bit too high, and Chronic has worked herself to a 1-0 count. That one's chopped to third on one hop, handled by the third baseman Hubbard. The throw across is on the money, and the Lions cannot grab that go-ahead run. We're tied up 2-2. Two -two. We go to the sixth. Two runs on one hit, no errors, one left on.
We've got ourselves a close one here at the WAC for game one between Piedmont and Huntington, game one of two. Second game will be scheduled to start around somewhere 25 to 35 minutes after the conclusion of this one. We'll also have Piedmont baseball going on on campus. They'll play two as well for game one slated for 2 p.m., game two at 6 p.m. First pitch launched out toward left, backing up his Votava, turning around and drops the ball. Into second base goes the catcher Treadway with reaching on the E7. Looked like Votava may have had a little trouble battling the sun there, but was able to get settled under it and then just could not corral it. And now Steinmeier trying to pitch around more trouble on the defensive side. McIntyre gets the bunt down. Taylor will make the tag up the first base line. Does get the job done. The runner, Treadway, will go to third. And now runner at third, one out. This is where you really need to strike out if you're Steinmeier. Piedmont had played a clean defensive game up until the fifth. A couple errors from Isley in that inning allowed the Hawks to grab that tying run. The error by Votava here in the Six. That one is lashed out toward left. Otava coming on, makes the grab. The throw to the plate will be late. Tagging up and scoring from third is Treadway. She has a little trouble getting up, grabbing at her left leg. So we're going to take a little bit of a break. We'll hope she is okay. Treadway helped to her dugout by her teammates. Something to watch. We'll see who potentially could be the new catcher. If Treadway has to come out of this game. She does have the go-ahead run. Reached on the air. Advanced to third. And then scores on the sacrifice fly from Hubbard. Now it'll be two out. Nobody on for the nine-hole hitter center fielder Cameron Miller. And she'll take a call at strike one. Another unearned run bites the Lions here in the sixth, and that one will miss up and in for ball one. Three two in favor of the Hawks. The Lions battled most of the game. Just a couple of miscues here in the late innings have cost them. Swinging out of the running out of the box was Miller. Came up well empty on that one. Good off-speed pitch there from Steinmeier. Want to take care of the nine-hole hitter before the top of the order comes up for the fourth time against her. Tries to go off the outside edge, misses off the plate away, two and two. All in all, still a very good showing for the Lions. Very competitive game against a number 11 team in the nation, trying to just barely make contact there. Fouled straight back by Miller. Do the 2-2 one more time. That one will also be poke foul. Lands on top of the Piedmont dugout. Piedmont will schedule to have the 7, 8, 9 hitters in their order due up in the 6th. Soft line drive handled by Isley, and that will retire the side. The Hawks strike for a run. They lead it 3-2. We go to the bottom of the 6th. And at the bottom of the six, Piedmont Trade.
We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Huntington leads Piedmont 3-2. More good news to report from the Huntington side of things. We saw the catcher Miranda Treadway limp off after scoring the go-ahead run in the top half of this inning. We were wondering if she would be able to continue on, and she is. She's back, back in the crouch behind home plate. Fired a strike to second base on the throwdown before the inning started. And now Brooke Cooper back to work in the six. She's got a one-run lead in line for the win now. I'll move her to 9-1 and one on the season. Steinmeier, who has pitched very well on the hook for the loss, even though it's a bunch of unearned runs charged to the junior right-hander this ball game. And looks like maybe now limping over is Treadway, so she may not be able to continue after all. She gave it a go, but trying to get into the crouch, that's a tough, tough ask for a catcher. We'll see Piedmont athletic trainer Kristen Whitlock over to check her out. We're going to have a replacement. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back shortly. New catcher for the Hawks, number 27, Madison Hill. Got a couple warm-ups, and now she's good to go. The 1-0 count to Alyssa Jarrett. Slow off speed. That finds the zone for strike one. Hill, we don't see a ton of. Definitely don't see it in baseball at all, but every once in a while in softball, you'll see a left-handed catcher, and that is what Hill is. 1-1. One -one. In the dirt for ball two. Lions, six outs to play with, trying to mount a late rally in a game they have led or have not trailed until this time up at the bat. Hit in the air by Jarrett, foul territory. Murphy makes the call and catch. And one is gone here in the bottom of the sixth. Now we'll see the center fielder, Hannah Calloway. She was lifted for a pinch hitter with the bases loaded. Her last time up, Lions were unable to cash in on that chance. And if you kind of look back to the game, that may have been the opportunity. In the third inning, they were had the Hawks reeling a little bit and were unable to capitalize by adding on as Callaway takes a called strike. Looks like Cooper is a very different style of pitcher as Roberts. Roberts, a lot of velocity, pure stuff. Cooper... A lot of off speed, especially early in the count. She even slows it down more and Callaway way ahead. That's kind of what you want if you're going to de ideally design a pitching staff for a softball doubleheader. You, well, you want two different styles of pitchers, and that's certainly what the Hawks have. Both of them have been excellent on the year. And that one is swung on and missed. A foul tipped into the mitt. Nice catch there by Madison Hill to secure the strikeout. Kennedy Two out in the bottom of the sixth inning. And now we'll see Kennedy Votava, last chance for the Lions here in the sixth inning. <laughs> Slow breaking ball or change up something off speed and Votava takes it for a call at strike one. She's consistently going with that off speed pitch with the first pitch of the at-bat, she's able to still strike one consistently with it. 0-1 goes with the fastball there. Doesn't miss, doesn't catch the zone for ball one. one one Check swing. Popped out into left, but on comes the shallow playing left fielder, Riley Rudick. Makes the grab, Lions out one, two, three. 
In the sixth, we head to the seventh with the Hawks leading three to two. Second baseman Brooks to Fankowitz. Megan Steinmeier back to the circle. She has done outstanding work there. Game one of this double header for the Lions. All three runs scored by the Hawks are unearned, although it doesn't really help Steinmeier. She's still in line for the loss. Unless she can hold the Hawks here and maybe the Piedmont defense or Piedmont offense can come through in the last inning. Stefankowitz. Takes ball, takes strike one, then takes ball one, running out of the box. Her speed has really been a problem so far in this game. 1-1, one, one, gets the bunt down, fielded by Isley. The throw is dropped by Kronick. And it looks like that one might go as an E4 on the second baseman, Kronick. Covering the Lions, they've had that exact same scenario a bunch today, and they were able to convert it, that Isley to Chronic connection. They were able to convert it the first three or four times, but the last three have been off the mark. A couple throws by Isley pulled Chronic off the bag. That one, that throw was on target. Chronic just unable to squeeze it. Runner goes, throw from Jarrett, one hop, and the tag is down, but not in time. Karanik, or rather speaks, and the umpire rules her safe. Coach Terry Martin is going to take a little stroll out to have a discussion with the second base umpire. I believe the pitch was a strike. Sometimes it's always tough to wait on the umpires, the home plate umpires, late calls, late strike calls when you have a play happening at second. Short little discussion there from Martin. Either way, Stefankowitz is safely at second base. And apparently that pitch was actually a ball. It's 1 0 now. Kylie Stevens. Steps back in. Four errors on the Lions today. She'll square to bunt and bunts it foul. One and two. Correction on that count is now one and two. So bunt should probably be off here from Stevens. Just need contact, though, if you're the Hawks. Try to add an insurance run for the last chance for the Lions. That one's put in play. Barely having to move and snatching it out of the air. On the pop-up is Maddie Speaks for out number one. And now we'll see the, box number 24, Jordan Holman. the dangerous Jordan Holman. She's almost been a little bit too quiet in this game. Had a sacrifice run scoring, a game-tying sacrifice fly. Her last time up, and as I mentioned that, she stings one out toward right center. That's down, and that's a insurance run that we talked about. In the second goes Holman with an RBI double as Stefankowitz scores easily, and it's now 4-2 Hawks. And another, make that the fourth unearned run surrendered by Steinmeier in this game. 
tough to ask. She had done a good job with Holman so far, and she's hitting, showing she's hitting in the 460s coming in this game for a reason. Terry Martin out to have a little discussion with Steinmeier, trying to see if she can limit the damage. Give the Piedmont Bats a chance to come back and at least tie this game. Is over. On the inning, Bailey Murphy steps in to bat. Four runs, four runs, six hits, two errors for the Hawks. Two runs, eight hits, four errors for the Lions. And that one misses just outside from Steinmeier to Murphy. 1-0. That one is hit a mile high up in the air. Speaks and Votava. Votava will take charge and make the grab in shallow left field for out number two. Now we'll see the right fielder, Riley Rudick. The right fielder, Riley Rudick. Hawks with a run in the third. And single runs in the fifth, sixth, and now the seventh to take this 4-2 lead. Lions with single runs in the first and third. First pitch swinging, Rudick pops it up foul, and that one will get out of play for strike one. That one misses off the plate away, evens the count at 101. One to Rudick. That one will drop down and in for ball two. Simeyer trying to take this one the distance. She has been able to give Piedmont a ton of innings in the circle this season. Seventy-one and two-thirds innings coming into today easily tops on the team, but now she's down three-one. She'll get a little encouragement from her third baseman Isley. Miranda. New catcher Madison Hill is in the on-deck circle for the Hawks. 3-1. That finds the zone. Good pitch by Steinmeier to run things full. We'll see what the Hawks do in the circle for game two. They Game one starter Roberts was pulled in the third inning. And Cooper is taking it the rest of the way. 3-2. Misses in the dirt low. Two out walk issue to Rudick. That'll put runners aboard at first and second. Two outs in the inning, and it'll be the catcher, Hill. Into the box, the catcher, Madison Hill. Who replaced Treadway, who had to leave with an injury. Left hand, another left handed hitter. Nothing but the Hawks. The good balance in the lineup, lefties and righties. Steinmeier looks and fires. Tap back to the circle, handled by Steinmeier. The throw is in time. Hawks add a run. Piedmont needs two. Going to the bottom of the seventh. One run on one hit, one error, two left.
Last chance for the Lions here in the bottom of the seventh. They trail Huntington 4-2. Just game one of two. We'll have another one coming up about 30 minutes following the conclusion of this one. Lions will also be at home tomorrow for a 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. doubleheader scheduled against LaGrange. Speaks tries to get the bunt down and rolls it just into foul territory. And now she will trot back to the batter's box to do face an 0-1 count. Brooke Cooper has done excellent relief work. Got out of a bases loaded jam in the third inning and has since shut down the Lions offense. That one missed outside, one and one. Maddie Speaks, Caitlin Isley, Kara Taylor, the top of the order. That's what you want up if you're Piedmont. That one misses down low for ball two. All four runs scored by the Hawks unearned against Megan Steinmeier. 2-1, slow off speed, and she has been excellent with that pitch all afternoon. That's been her best pitch by far. Piedmont has not been able to really do anything with it. Let's see if she doubles up with it here, 2-2. Two two. Does, does, doesn't get the call. Floats just outside. Good take there by Maddie Speaks, and now she's worked herself into a full count. Three two fouled straight back to us, and we'll do the three two again. Reached out, poked to the left side of the infield, charging is Holman. That's an impressive play. Charging fires in one motion to nab speaks by a step and a half at first. For out number one. Coming the third baseman, Caitlin Isley. And we'll see Caitlin Isley. Impressive day at the plate for the senior third baseman for the Lions. Slow, slow change up again on the first pitch. This one misses low for ball one. That one's hit sharply, deflects off the first baseman, Davis, unable to come up with it, was the second baseman, Stefankowitz. It's going to be another base knock for Isley. She has been excellent at the plate today, and now that'll bring up Carrot Taylor as the tying run. Situation where you don't want to do too much if you're Taylor. Really, you just want to keep the line moving. Get Jasmine Lowry to the plate. Trying to go to the outside corner. She went with a fastball there on the first pitch and that missed outside for ball one. Definitely don't want to take any really any risk on the bases. If you're Isley, the, your run does not matter. Slow off speed. Isley dives back on the throw behind at first. Easily safe on that. It's 2-0 now to Taylor. So who you want, the part of the order you want up if you're the Lions facing this two-run deficit. Taylor got under that one. Shallow center field, fighting the sun a little bit and unable to catch it. It looked like it caught her in the face, the center fielder Miller. And we are going to take a break as she's going to be tended to by the Piedmont Athletic Trainers and her coach.
We are back here at the Walker Athletic Complex. Center fielder Cameron Miller helped off the field by her coach and Piedmont athletic trainer Kristen Whitlock. She's replaced by Katie or Kate Dinkle in center field. Lions with the tying run at first base. Isley standing at second. Jasmine Lowry, the potential winning run, is in the box. Hits sharply. Two hops to the second baseman. Stefankowitz gets out. Number two of the inning at second base. 4-6 on the fielder's choice. And now it's up to Megan Steinmeier. Hit relatively sharply by Lowry. Just not placed in the right spot. Handled well by the middle infield of the Hawks. We'll have a first and third sign here. That's a big, it's a big run there at first base and Lowry. Really, you don't really want to worry about the run scoring at third. The run that matters is Lowry at first. I feel like they're going to do all they can to keep Lowry at first base. As they should. Lowry not going anywhere on that one. It's 1-0 to Steinmeier. Ball in the outfield playing very shallow. Steinmeier does have some power. Takes down and away for ball two. She's able to get into one. It could be tie game. Maddie Chronic in the on deck circle. 2 0 now to Steinmeier. Slow off speed. That misses outside. And now Steinmeier almost with an auto take here. Should be auto take on 3 0. She is the potential winning run. Not someone you want to walk if you're Cooper. 3-0, that one misses off the plate away, and Piedmont has loaded the bases with two out in the bottom of the seventh. And now let's see what Coach Terry Martin does, likely to pinch a run for... Likely to pinch a run for Steinmeier at first, and we're going to have another pitching change. We're going to go back to the starter, Ali Roberts. What a spot to go back to her, Grace... Or rather, Brooke Cooper did her job, just unable to finish it off. Roberts will get warmed up, and we will take a break and be back with the conclusion of this game. Base is loaded, two out. Chronic steps in against Roberts. First swing is empty there from the freshman second baseman. Owen won the count. Roberts trying to close this one out. That one fired well off the plate away. Nice job by the catcher Hill to snag that one. Hawks about two starters leave with injuries. Roberts was pulled in the third. Cooper took the bulk of the game in the circle. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Swing and a miss by Chronic. That's a tough pitch. A pitch the Lions were having trouble with early on in this game one. And now the freshman's going to have to battle down one and two. He's going to have to stay off of that rise ball at the letters. Here it is. Swing and a miss, and that's the ball game. Roberts comes in, gets the save. Hawks take game one, four to two. Final score, game one, Huntington four, Piedmont two. A roller coaster of a ball game, but Huntington comes out on top, showing why they're a nationally ranked team. We'll have game two coming up in about 30 minutes. Stay tuned.